We were dreaming Californication this past weekend as the IndyCars raced in Long Beach. And from curb controversies to bump related banter, we were treated to a pretty good race. Welcome to the RPM show, and wow, Andretti Autosport actually had a pretty good weekend. It's not often that Scott Dixon fails to finish, let alone finish last. It's his first DNF since Gateway in 2021, and surprisingly after his incident with Pato in turn 7, it wasn't for crash damage. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I think Dixon turned in on Pato. Not out of malice, obviously, Dixon just didn't see him there. But that move from Pato, while bold, wasn't a kamikaze mission either. An angry Dixon had a weekend to forget. So for that, Dixon gets a 2 out of 10. Just not a weekend to be proud of in any way, shape, or form. VK was pretty anonymous this weekend. Outside of the crash in second practice, I could probably count the total times he was mentioned this weekend on one hand. This might be a blessing in disguise, as both VK and Daly just didn't have the pace to contend at all this weekend. Renus was running outside the top 15 when a fuel pressure issue ended his day. His weekend was so anonymous, I had to look up VK on Twitter to figure out what actually happened, because the NBC broadcast said nothing about why he retired. At least he was better than his teammates, so I'm giving him a 3.5 out of 10. After a great start to the season, Season, Canapino hit some wicked turbulence in Long Beach. He was down on pace all weekend, and it never really got any better. Sure, he was in the lead after staying out during the Dixon Yellow, but a hit to the inside wall of turn 6 broke his suspension and left him 33 laps down. Even had that not happened, Canapino was probably set for a finish outside the top 20 anyways. He started towards the back and was running there for most of the race. I'll cut him some slack, he is still a rookie after all and he did lead his first laps in the series, but it was still a bad weekend, so for Canapino, he's getting a 3 out of 10. Things were down in St. Pete, then up in Texas, and now in Long Beach were back down. Besides the spin and stall that derailed his race, it was a nothing weekend. Coming home 3 laps down, Benjamin Peterson is getting a 3 out of 10. Daly celebrated his 100th IndyCar start this past weekend, but that was all there was to celebrate. Connor was slow this weekend, started last, and in terms of pace, he was whooped by VK all weekend. At least he finished the race with that incident, but that really doesn't say much. He's getting a 2, and I'm sure the Indy 500 couldn't come quicker for him. For the second week in a row, a surefire top 10 for Rossi goes down the drain. This time it was a heartbreaking suspension failure that ended his race sooner than it should've. Rossi is now 15th in points, and while I don't think think it's urgent, I think it's high time to get things turned in the right direction. He was decently quick though, so I'll give him a 4 out of 10. It was a rookie error in turn 1 that destroyed Elio's chances of having two good races in a row. Maybe Elio's just cursed at Long Beach, after all the last time he won here I was negative 3 years old. So therefore a 3 out of 10 is what I'm giving Elio. What looked like a weekend with great promise went downhill fast. From a brutal qualifying wreck to an upsetting race, Malukas had a disappointing weekend. I'm giving him a generous 4. Another Another disappointing showing came from Callum Eilat, who after back-to-back -to -back top 10s was looking like a million bucks. But after a crash in second practice and a puncture during the race that wrecked his chances, Eilat left Long Beach with a $100 Applebee's gift card. He's still got enough to eat, but things could be better. I'll give him a 4.5 out of 10, mainly because of how badly he beat his teammates. Stingray Rob, however, was really just there, I guess. If Renus VK was anonymous, Stingray Rob was MIA. I don't even think I heard his name at all this weekend, and it's not like you can miss a name like his. I've got nothing else to say, 4 out of 10. For Pato, however, I've got a lot to say. As much as I don't think the first incident was necessarily on him, the move on Kirkwood on the next restart was done with a death wish. I think it was obvious from a mile away that he wasn't going to make that turn. And for the guy that entered this race in the championship lead, he's leaving Long Beach with egg on his face. Pato's driven very maturely so far this year, but the move he pulled during this race was one I'd expect more from a rookie. So from losing the championship lead, damaging his car and finishing a lap down, Pato's getting a 3, and he should be counting his lucky stars it isn't closer to a 2. Back to some cheery stuff now, Devlin D. Francesco finally finished. He might have been the rear gunner for the Andretti squad, but at least he doesn't have a wrecked race car for the third race in a row. In terms of pace 2, Devlin is improving compared to his performances last year. I'll give him a 4.5. He still has stuff to work on obviously, but he has a stable foundation to build off of. 
This is a great way to bounce back for Pajno. Sure, he's still farther down than he and the team want to be, but Simon wasn't drowning either. If anything, he was staying above water quite nicely. It's a solid 5.5 out of 10 for the Frenchman. For the second race in a row, Lungard was really just there. That's certainly not a bad thing, but what is a bad thing is finishing behind both of your teammates. The Ray Hall team was a lot more competitive this weekend, so that is a consolation prize. But overall, another math performance from Lungard. Hopefully the results get better, otherwise people are gonna start talking about number 45 car curse. Speaking of 4-5, it's a 4.5 for me. Okay, now here's a performance I can get behind. Jack Harvey celebrated his 30th birthday on Saturday, and on Sunday he could celebrate a decent run, capping off his best weekend in some time. Maybe making the video about Harvey's situation and how he might lose his drive was a fire needed to bring Harvey back from the dead. Maybe I have some strange ability where the exact opposite of what I say comes true. Guess that rules out my chances of having a career as a financial advisor, or a psychic for that matter. Anyways, back to Harvey. It was a really solid showing from him, so for that I'm giving Jack a 6 out of 10. There's still a bit to make up for both team and driver, but things are looking decent and if he carries momentum through to the Indy Road Course, he could turn some heads at the track he got podium at back in 2019. Completing the Ray Hall trifecta, Graham finishes ahead of his teammates, something that's somewhat expected to be honest, but that doesn't take the luster off a run like that, and there's clearly progress being made at Ray Hall Lerman Lanigan. Graham gets a 5 out of 10, pretty good. I was shocked to realize that this was just Santino Ferrucci's second race at Long Beach, especially so after a finish like that. That's a really solid run for both Santino and AJ Foyt as a whole, and it flew under the radar for the most part. Very impressive stuff, 6 and a half out of 10. Scotty Mack was the odd man out of Penske this weekend. The most I heard of him all weekend was during the IMSA broadcast, which tells you everything you need to know about how the IndyCar side of things went this weekend. I'm feeling a 5. What manner of terrible thing went wrong is a question most New Garden fans will be asking for the next two weeks. He was one of the favorites entering the weekend, having won here last year, but after leading at times and being a serious contender, a botched pitch strategy towards the finish ruined his day with the same effectiveness of being crapped on by a pigeon. Another question New Garden fans will be asking is what could have been. It's a 5 out of 10 for me. What a disappointment. He might have wrecked it in qualifying, but Marcus Armstrong had a great weekend overall. He was there in terms of pace from Friday to Sunday, and that's a good run for him. Marcus has a future in this series, no doubt, and this just adds to that fact. It's a 6.5 out of 10, would have been a 7 had he not crashed in qualifying. This was a great run from Felix Rosenquist. The best part was he beat both of his teammates, although with the issues they ran into, that's not much of a shock. He may still be behind Rossi in points, but there's plenty of positives for Felix. After a bad start to the season, Rosenquist had a good day. I'm giving Felix a 7. His car might have been gray this weekend, but the sun was shining on that 6 team. Will Power finishing 6th caught me off guard in a good way. He seemed to be Penske's rear gunner early on in the weekend, but he came out of the weekend much better than his teammates. Much like Felix, Power had a good run after a bad start to the season, and this may be a turning point to fight for his second title in a row. He's getting a 7 out of 10 too. I don't feel like we talk about Palau as much as we should, at least when it comes to stuff happening on track. He's third in the points currently, and while he didn't light the world on fire this weekend, Alex led laps, finished fifth, and kept it clean. Palau ran at the front all day, and finished with a front group, being roughly 22 seconds ahead of power. So Palau is getting a decent 7.5 out of 10. He's got momentum on his side as we go back to the track he got his first win at two years ago. It may not be a win, but it's good to see Colin get some decent results here in Long Beach. In Colin's three previous races here, he either finished first or 23rd, so it's positive seeing him be generally competitive. So it's positive seeing him be generally competitive. As much as he may be a little disappointed finishing off the podium, Colin should be happy to get another decent result. We learned with Will Power last year that at right speed doesn't mean everything, it's consistency that does. And so far this year, Herta is consistently fast. I'm giving Herta an 8 out of 10. The sneaky Swede just got his retribution for last year, grabbing a third place finish and going back to the championship lead with a big gap to work with. I said it with Palo and Herta, and I'll say it again for Marcus too. He didn't light the world on fire, but strives like the one he had in Long Beach that win championships. It's still early in the year, but Ericsson has shown himself as a top dog in the first three races. So for making up for last year, having a great day all round and grabbing the championship lead, Marcus Marcus gets an 8.5 out of 10. I said in the RPM show after Texas that Grosjean would be one to look out for in Long Beach, and he certainly was. Some say it might sting coming home in second for the second year in a row, but Roman said after the race that he wanted to grab some points, and that's exactly what he did. He finally has some points on the table, so for that he gets an 8 out of 10. And finally, we have your winner from the 2023 Long Beach Grand Prix. It's Kyle Kerr.
Kirkwood. From the rough time last race in the Lone Star State, to the elation he feels on the Golden Coast, Kirkwood had one hell of a weekend. It was an Alexander Rossi-esque performance from him, back when Rossi was one of the best drivers on the grid and whooped the field from 2018 to 2019. It was Kyle's race to lose from the looks of it, with Kirkwood grabbing the pole, leading the most laps, and taking his first victory in the series. It's one hell of a way to bounce back after Texas, and a pretty fantastic weekend in the grand scheme of things as well. Congratulations to Kyle Kirkwood for not only taking the win in Long Beach and grabbing his first career win, but also grabbing a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Here's my question to you, the viewer. What driver's performances shocked you the most in Long Beach? Thank you for watching this episode of the RPM Show. If you'd like to watch the previous episode, click the card on the top right. And if you'd like to see the series playlist, click the card on the bottom right. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for the Barber Review on May 3rd. Have a great afternoon.